Hello. Great. Welcome back uh, from uh, from lunch, and uh, so this is going to start off of, of the afternoon uh, session. Uh, I think we'll have a tough time living up to the uh, to the uh, to the morning sessions. They were uh, great sessions, a lot to to uh, to think about, and and a lot to think about um, for us as a network as we go forward. We have a strategic planning session. Uh, tomorrow night, and this will all be uh, food uh, for thought. One of the things about uh, about this this conference or this meeting is that it's uh, directed uh, by TVN, and and one of the things that we do here is uh, to bring you up to date where we are as a network, uh, our activities, and uh, maybe get some feedback as to where we go from here. So I'm going to spend the first little while. Um, talking uh, about that, then uh, have Anika Jaguer who's going to present on an environmental scan that's been uh, commissioned by, by TVN, and then Perminder Reina from the Canadian Longitudinal Studies on Aging is uh, going to come up afterwards. But without further ado, I'm just going to, uh, uh, I'm going to start. So what I want to do today is look at the current status of TVN, our research priorities and projects. Uh, our knowledge mobilization efforts, uh, partnering and collaborating with TVN, and then go over a bit of a, a survey that we did of uh, network affiliates and, and network uh, members to see how we were perceived and maybe get your input uh, on that. I apologize if some, of the, some people have seen some of the slides, but I thought it'd be useful to get everybody on the same, uh, on the same page. As you all know, we're a national not-for-profit network uh, funded by networks as centers of excellence, and we were funded to develop, evaluate, and disseminate knowledge on health care for frail elderly Canadians, their families, and caregivers. Our host partners are Queen's University, Kingston General Hospital. We were funded in 2012, and our renewal application is due in, 20, uh, six, in June of 2016, although our funding goes to 2017. Um, this is the network over the past while. We've expanded our network uh, dramatically. We're up to 40 member institutions, 400 researchers, over 100 research projects, uh, 200, over 230 trainees, that's an older number, and about 2,400 members or people that are aligned with our, our network from across Canada. So over the past year, the slide looks dramatically different than what it would have uh, last year. The network is uh, grown uh, has grown uh, rapidly. And overall, at the end of the day, if we, we have the opportunities for two more rounds of funding to take us out to 2027, and if we look at the long-term outcome of where we want to be as a network, we want to be able to, to look at two things. We want to be able to say that we've improved care for uh, frail elderly, and that's measurable patient-centered outcomes. And we also want to, and the other aspect is improved efficiency, which is measurable healthcare resource utilization outcomes. Either one of them would be fine if we could do improved care and reduce utilization costs. Um, that would be great. Uh, we have four major components of the network, which are our research program, which uh, funds original research, and that occupies around uh, 55 to 60 percent of our funding, uh, depending on how you uh, measure it. We train highly qualified uh, personnel. We have a fellowship program. We have summer students, and uh, students are embedded in all the research projects uh, that uh, uh, that we fund. Uh, an area of, uh, of increasing importance to us is going to be network and partnerships as we go forward um, not, and uh, knowledge mobilization and I'll speak about those as uh, uh, further. So how, do we go, how are we going to evaluate our long-term uh, success? Uh, and I really like that graphic at the bottom there that uh, success can really be a torturous uh, path. It's usually not a straight line that you get, you decide to go from one place to another and you're successful. And, and I think that embodies our course. And, and, uh, but I think we are making progress, but uh, it certainly hasn't been a straight line. So 
If we want to think about how we're actually going to measure success going forward, we need to understand what the baseline is. We need to understand what uh, health care outcomes with resource utilization of frail elderly is. And uh, towards that end, uh, we have two uh, projects that are ongoing, which should, are going to be done towards the end of this year and early 2016. And they're an environmental scan of health care climate for the seriously ill frail elderly. And the PI is Anik Jaguer, and we're going to, it's going to present on that uh, after me. And then also one led by Rob Fowler, which is a nas uh, national comparison of intensity of end of life care in Canada. And that looks at the patterns, risk factors, and targets uh, for, uh, for interventions. And that will help us establish our baseline as to how we actually compare ourselves as to where we, we are at various time points uh, in the future. Um, we all, uh, so these are our research is organized according to, to themes. Our themes are listed on the slide, so they're improved end of life care, advanced care planning, improved acute care, critical care, optimization of community care, residential care, and optimization of transitions of care. And ultimately, we want to improve outcomes, as I said uh, before, by leveraging the research that we do uh, acor across the four themes. It's also important to say that we're not dependent just purely on research that we commission or that we fund. We, this is in the context of what's, what other research that may have been done in other areas of our research that's already been done, and the funding of knowledge syntheses within these four themes is an important activity uh, for us. So our approach to frailty is that we want to increasingly promote the systematic identification of frailty uh, in Canadians, increase the awareness of frailty, increase the awareness of its impact on the healthcare system. But more important, uh, and, and just as important, not more importantly, we want to improve the evidence base for decision making and treatment of those identified as being frail. Uh, as you know, a lot of people who are frail, who have multiple comorbidities, uh, who have functional limitations, are not included in, in, research, uh, in, in, in research studies, which leads to the problems that we heard about earlier on, where, where they may be put on multiple medications all at the same time, or have interventions that really have not been studied in this population. So we want to, we want to do both things. We want to increase the identification of frailty, but at the end of the day, also improve the evidence base for decision making in this population. Um, just uh, quickly uh, on the slide is our uh, uh, schematic of all our research, uh, our research uh, grants. As you can see, um, a lot of them uh, are going towards the, uh, are, going, are finishing up at the end of this year, are going to be finishing up in 2016, uh, some in uh, 2017. Um, so just to go through some of them, our catalyst grants are one-year grants. They're aimed to, to fund innovative projects or pilot projects. Um, there's an open catalyst call right now that actually closes at the end of, uh, uh, at the end of uh, next week. Um, in the spring, we funded uh, two calls specifically targeted at uh, frailty, uh, knowledge synthesis on frailty, and looking at uh, um, outcomes in various populations, and then also in an RFP of the implementation of frailty measurement in the healthcare system. And the, the other call that's currently open right now is a call for large-scale grants, which are aimed to go into our renewal application. Um, that call was launched in June of this year, will we'll close in December of this year, and, and this looks at large projects that are designed to be done in multi, that are multi-provincial, uh, in, uh, inter-collaborative, um, that actually have the ability to transform the healthcare system. And they're going to be evaluated uh, based on, on, our, on our strategic plan and the ability to actually transform the healthcare system or to be innovative and change the way that we care uh, for frail elderly. And uh, so the pre-work on them would start in the spring, but they would only go forward if, uh, if our uh, uh, funding was renewed in, um, at, and we'll find out about that in the fall of uh, next year. Our, um, just to bring you up to date on our training program, so we have a, uh, our training program is, uh, 
has been uh, fairly, uh, quite successful. So we train uh, fellows. We have a fellowship program. Uh, a call for fellows is, uh, is currently open. Um, we have a summer, we train summer. We give grants for summer studentships. We'll be having another one next, uh, next summer. And we're also hosting a summer program in aging, which is going to be in the spring of next year, which is in conjunction with CIHR, and it's going to be devoted to, uh, to frailty and late uh, life issues. And this attracts fellows from across Canada, uh, or trainees from across Canada, but also international uh, trainees. So it's a great opportunity for people to come together, um, especially, and uh, we're gonna have an international faculty uh, there. So uh, keep an eye out for this as uh, we, uh, and we'll release uh, further details uh, coming up. And the uh, vast majority of our trainees are, uh, are embedded in, in research projects. And the fact that uh, uh, the majority are still ongoing it just reflects that a lot of the projects are still ongoing. One of uh, our key deliverables going forward is to develop partnerships. So um, we've been, uh, this has been an area of increasing activity for us because we want to partner with industry government, NGOs, community groups, and other networks to enhance our capacity. Obviously, we only have a limited amount of funds, so we want to leverage whatever funding we have with whatever other resources are out there, and particularly, we don't want to reinvent uh, the wheel. Uh, we want to develop research groups that span academic, non-academic co uh, collaborations for integrated generalized solutions, and uh, as I said before, we want to leverage our resources. Going forward, uh, we want to secure about one-to-one -one matching uh, funds so we can effectively double uh, our budget, and that, that's a fairly standard uh, criteria for the NCE. Uh, our knowledge mobilization efforts, uh, uh, so two major, uh, two major efforts. One is the advocating for frailty awareness, uh, detection, and uh, screening. Uh, we had uh, the first forum uh, that we invited the policymakers, researchers, uh, clinicians. That was in June of uh, this year. Uh, working groups have come out of that that are going to uh, specifically look at the various aspects of, of this in the Canadian healthcare system, which includes ethical and legal uh, considerations, uh, social implications, uh, uh, potentially what tools to use, political considerations, economic considerations, and these groups are uh, going to be start are going to start working for the second forum, which is planned for 2016, which will be more targeted at policymakers, so that we can include actually start to influence the decision makers to change the the uh, the healthcare system, and we have heard a fair amount about. Uh, uh, about uh, the other knowledge mobilization is increasing the engagement of frail elderly and caregivers in health system administration, policy making and research. Um, that was a full day uh, yesterday. A lot of good work is going to come out of that and that's going to become an increasing focus as we, uh, as we go forward. As a network, we've already taken this to, to heart to a certain, a certain extent. This will be become an increasing focus as we go forward. Um, so we have uh, um, citizen engagement in our variety of TVM platforms, including uh, participation in all our uh, committees, uh, in, in the evaluation of research projects, in the selection of our uh, trainees, and uh, we have a citizen engagement uh, steering committee and working group, and citizen engagement is going to become a key committee as we uh, go forward. So as we, uh, as I talked about before, we're gearing towards a renewal. Our renewal application is due June of uh, uh, next year, and that's going to occupy a fair amount of our time and uh, resources. Uh, we're undergoing a strategic planning uh, process to refine where we go. Obviously, this problem is huge. We need to narrow our focus uh, somewhat. Um, and uh, as uh, the network matures going forward, we're going to increasingly focus on knowledge translation and knowledge mobilization. Um, and as part of this, we're also evaluating our uh, program. So for example, we're evaluating our training 
uh, our training program that's going to uh, start in the next little while. But as part of our evaluation, we did a, a survey of our network members and affiliates. And affiliates. Uh, so we uh, developed a survey, piloted it, and uh, then developed. And, um, and the, it was anonymous, and we distributed it to all the network members. So I want to just present some of those uh, results and maybe uh, get some feedback at the end uh, from that. So we d demonstrated, we had 250 people responded. As I said, it was an anonymous survey uh, from a variety of, uh, uh, from a variety of uh, backgrounds, so including uh, some were patient families, uh, caregivers, uh, majority were healthcare professionals, uh, some were researchers, some were students, and uh, from a variety of uh, affiliations. Uh, the majority of them were from an academic affiliation. And the first question was, uh, was how confident are you that current or future investment in the work of TVN will improve the care of frail elderly Canadians? Um, and that was uh, actually fairly, that was quite high. The vast majority of people th felt confident that, that our, our work would improve uh, uh, the care for el elderly Canadians, recognizing that this is, uh, um, th these are people that are involved with us, but still it, it's, it's fairly high. It was anonymous, so we were, in, uh, that's fair, quite encouraging. And if you actually look at uh, the respondents, so, uh, a lot of people uh, made very positive comments. There was an ability for a qualitative portion of the survey. Um, so things like uh, TVN has shown vision, uh, we've established a network of researchers, uh, uh, the theme areas of research are sound, the work is relevant, very innovative, the research is rigorous. It's nice to, to receive positive feedback, but sometime, it, sometimes it's, act, it's much more informative to actually look at where people have identified the concerns. And if we look at the concerns, there they can be grouped into a couple of groups. The first um, is the translation into policy and practice, which is something that we've identified within the network and which is uh, going to be an in increasing focus. So for example, comment is unclear how TDN initiatives will result in health policy development and change. Um, I'm concerned that TDN is too focused on technologies and measurement at the expense of public policy. Um, your efforts have to re influence our very reluctant politicians. So very, I, th I think some of them are very insightful and some of the things that we really need to, uh, to consider. Uh, there's a, uh, the greater emphasis on knowledge translation was identified, um, and, that's, and, and that's by, um, and knowledge translation will become an increasing focus as TVN goes forward, so that's, uh, that's not surprising. And also, it was identified that we're just starting to build a network, which, which we are, which it will grow over, over time. Um, so there was also suggestion uh, for more community-based initiatives and wider inclusion. Um, so it's the focus of the work right. Uh, one of the comments was too much focus on palliative care and not enough on other aspects of elder care. Um, the other one said, TVN seems to only support acute care related critical care research and not community frail elderly research. So very, uh, uh, very disparate type of comments and, and I think it, this speaks actually we need to educate what we do because actually if we look across our network, approximately a quarter of all our research is split among all its uh, our four themes, the, the amount of research within the four themes is, is roughly equal. Um, and also that we funded safe and low impact uh, work, which I mean, I'm not sure how to take that. Um, lack of focus on First Nations is troubling. Um, that hasn't been by, by uh, intent. Uh, we just haven't, uh, we are dependent on the research community to come to us to respond to our calls and that may be something that we think about in, in, the, in the future. And also the other one that, that, that uh, the other last comment is that there's, uh, that was made is that there's insufficient attention to diversity and the diverse experiences of end of life, which I think is, 
is very is a very important comment. I mean, Canada is become, is a, becoming more multicultural as we go forward, and I think as we go forward, uh, we need to understand the late life experiences, frailty experiences from different lenses, and that may be something that we uh, that we think about, especially that we need to consider as uh, we embark on our strategic uh, planning process. Um, so then we actually asked how supportive of you of the various uh, the, uh, aspects of TVN. So overall for uh, our research programs were high. What I found, uh, and, and actually quite high, and, but I also find interesting is that although these, are, uh, these were respondents that were part of our network, you know, about 9% said that they weren't aware of our research, which is, which is interesting. Um, how supportive of you of the directions of TVN training program. Again, the support was uh, quite high, uh, especially among those who have participated in the research program. As I said before, we're going to do a formal evaluation of our research program, uh, but overall the, uh, the support was quite high there. Um, and uh, support for our collaboration and network uh, activities, again, uh, quite high support uh, there. Uh, some people were not aware of it, some people were aware, but not involved in it. And I think that that just speaks to um, this is going to become an increasing focus for us as we go forward. Um, and finally, for us, uh, and are you supportive of TVN being funded over the long term? Over 80% of people felt that we should be funded over the long term, which speaks to, which is gratifying their support, at least for us uh, going forward. Uh, only about 4% said no, we shouldn't be funded, um, and there were some comments uh, in there. Um, you know, all safe, low impact investments, which um, which I'm not sure how to take again, but, uh, uh, but the vast majority were supportive of us being funded uh, going forward. Um, and then we asked about the, the support for increasing the recognition of frailty together uh, with systematic screening or assessment for frailty in selected populations in all settings of care. And again, this was strongly uh, supported. The mean was 8.5. Uh, of all the respondents, this was probably the most supported. So I think it, it, lends, it lends support to, to, um, to our approach overall. And finally, this, be, this has been the most vexing issue for us, one of the most vexing issues for us. And this is, do you think that TVN, which if, for, for those of you who don't know, it stands for Technology Evaluation in the Elderly Network, should change its name to better reflect its focus. Um, and th this was nearly two-thirds of people thought we should change its name. Only 10% said we should not. Um, and this has been an item of discussion for us in the network for a long period of time. I spend a lot of time saying that we mean technology in its broadest sense, not in a narrow sense. And actually, a lot, the vast, vast majority of things that we fund actually would not be are, are in the very broadest sense of technology. So uh, we've evolved as a network, and the name really does not reflect uh, what we do and the vast majority of people responded to the surveys thought that we should change its name so then when we asked for suggestions for a new name these are some of the suggestions um, I won't read them all but um, you know 50% of the suggestions included the word elderly or elders um, there's a lot of uh, suggestions there there we had over 80 suggestions uh, overall and about 20% felt that we shouldn't use elderly in any name, um, and it should be replaced by seniors, older people, adults, advanced age, frailty, although I'm hearing frailty may not be such a good word. So, so it, this is a work in, in, in progress. Some of the other names that we're considering are, uh, are up on the screen. So uh, two, a uh, couple of potential names are the Late Life and Frailty Network, which reflects exactly what we're, uh, what we're doing. That could be aggregated into LifeNet, or you can make a Canadian LifeNet or LifeNet Canada. Or the other one, which is an acronym, which would be Frailty Research for the Improvement of Late Life Quality of Care Network, which is the acronym is Frailty. Net. 
Um, both of those are, are active uh, considerations or there may be other suggestions. So actually maybe um, anybody, uh, so maybe I can get a show of hands. How many people would like number one, late life and frailty network? Do you think that that reflects what we do and where we should go? So some smattering of hands. How about frailty research for the improvement of late life quality of care network which aggregates into frailty net? Most people are, are number one. How about number three, none of the above? And, and if you raise your hands, I want suggestions. <laughs> There's guards at the doors, you won't be able to leave. This has been a vexing issue for us and, and uh, we're gonna have a lot more, uh, lot more discussions. And uh, saying that, I'm just I'm going to I'm going to finish off. So the network has continued to evolve. Um, our research progress, our our, uh, our research programs are still in progress. Uh, it's really too early to gauge impacts. We're gearing up for reapplication. Seems to be strong support for the network within people involved with us, and we're strongly considering changing the names. So I'm going to finish off uh, there, and uh, and I'm going to invite uh, Anik uh, Jaguer to to come up. Thank you.